Howdy ho, neighborinos. Man who's Dan back from long vacation. To Today we're playing a little game called Hearthstone. This is a standard trading card game. Uh, if you do some Magic the Gathering or any little Pokemon games or anything like that, you'll probably be pretty familiar with some of the rules of this. Um, get this right out of the way. This is a free to play game. Uh, you get some cards just by playing the game, and then through playing it, you also earn coins to buy packs or arena tickets. I'll get into that later. Uh, primarily, packs is what you'd buy with it. So you can do cards, keep playing, etc., etc. Um, obviously, the alternative is you can use real money to do that a whole lot faster. Um, I had to explain that real quick because whenever you first turn the game on, after you do the tutorial, you start unlocking these daily quests, which is a way to earn bonus coins for the day. Typically you only earn 10 coins for 3 wins, and it takes 100 coins to buy a pack. So that's 30 wins to buy one pack, that's quite a bit of uh, gameplay. So once per day they update this little quest thing here, where you can get some bonus coins. Uh, you can store up to 3 quests, so if you don't play for uh, 2 days, on the 3rd day you'll have 3 quests, after that you cease to get any more. So if you're looking to maximize your profits you're going to want to play at least once every three days just to keep that up so let's go ahead and skip past that here's your little options down here up here you've got play this is against other people as it says practice against computers arena is a uh, if you're familiar with drafting from other card games it's like that where you pay so many coins or so much real money and you open several packs and choose a card from each pack until you have a full deck of 30 and then you play against other people who have done the same it's kind of a fair fairish balanced way of playing the game because you don't have people that have these huge catalogs of legendaries and rare cards it's everyone is pretty equal so it's fun but it does it is sort of a pay to play you have to save up um, let's just take a look. Maybe. There we are. Uh, 150 coins or $2. So that, that can be expensive. Even if you don't win any matches, you get a pack of cards and a few coins back. So it's, you have to win, I think, three games last I checked to break even. Uh, and then any more than that, you would actually profit and essentially be getting more than what you paid for. So that's the risk reward. Uh, down here you've got your open packs, if you have any to open, your collection, this is where you build your custom decks, the shop, you can see all the different pack pricing and options. So far I have only bought with uh, money I've earned, I've not spent real money on this as of this time, nor do I plan to, but it's always tempting. And then lastly your quest log, here you can check your daily quests if you need to know what they are, your rank as you can see. You start at 25, more than 22, not very high up on that. And I've only won two arena matches consecutively. And then it shows you your level of all the classes. That's similar to other games, how you might have, like in Magic, you'd have a red deck, or a blue deck, or in Pokemon you'd have, you know, a, maybe a lightning or psychic themed deck. Uh, the class is basically your initial theme of your deck, and then you can build around that. Uh, there's cards that can be used in any decks, and then class-specific cards uh, that go to that class's playstyle. Once you get a class to level 10, you've unlocked all the basic free cards for that class that you can. Uh, the only way to unlock more cards for that class is to play and win and buy packs, or there's kind of a create a card system, but we'll get into that at some other point. So, as you can see, I've got almost everything to at least level 10, except for my hunter and rogue um, so those are the only ones I have left to actually get any basic cards left so and then the last thing on this screen is on your quests here if you get something you're not really fond of uh, you can hit the X once per day to reset that quest to try and get a different random quest um, I'm okay with both these so I'm gonna stick with them and I've already started this one which that's another thing you can you don't have to do them in one sitting you can do them over time so um, let's go ahead and get started and we'll play I'm not going to do my daily quests for this video just because uh, 
I don't necessarily want to lose right away, although I might. Um, you've got your deck options here. These are the standard decks you unlock as you play through the game and use just the basic cards. They're pretty solid decks. You can win on casual play with just the standard decks. You know, it's very possible to win. Uh, and then your custom decks, which are obviously custom built from the cards you have. Um, I'll go over here the different class types. Warrior. Um, each class has its own ability that costs two mana. The warrior's is armor up, gains two armor. Um, armor is basically like a second life pool, whereas, uh, say, a character like the priest here, who could heal two, he can restore two health to anyone himself or any of his creatures or even opposing creatures if for some reason you would need to do that. Uh, but, you know, that's you cannot exceed 30 health, which is the max health. Whereas the warrior gets the armor, he could be 30 health, and then, to my knowledge, there's no limit to how much armor you can have. So in theory, the warrior can keep increasing his health over and over and over again, even if he's at full health. The shaman is next. Summons a random totem. To my knowledge, there's only four totems. A healing totem that heals all your minions at the end of a turn. A one attack power, one toughness totem, which is just kind of a basic little attacking creature. Uh, most totems have no attack power with two toughness, two life. Uh, then there's a totem that has taunt, which means it has to be killed before they can attack you directly. And then lastly is a, I forget the other totem, where I think it's a wind one, where it increases your spell damage. So like cards you have that say, this card just deals X damage, now it deals one more damage. Uh, the rogue summons a dagger with one two, which uh, means it'll do one damage and you can attack two times with it overall before the weapon's destroyed and have to summon another one. Normally your hero can't attack unless they have a weapon, so the rogue is one of the few that can just do that. Uh, Paladin just summons a minion with one attack power and one toughness. For me the Paladins is one of the weaker ones in the game. It summons a very weak creature. Uh, you know, if you have spells that can enhance it, that's good, but of all these, I would say the Paladins is the weakest, especially late game. Early game, it can be okay with some overwhelming force, but late game, it's like a 1-1 one -one is not going to win you the game, typically. There's just, I just feel it's kind of weak. Uh, the Hunter just does two straight damage to the hero. That's a solid power. It doesn't have a lot of flexibility, but if you can just draw the game out long enough, you can whittle them down with that and win. Uh, Druid, uh, kind of unique, gives one armor, similar to the warriors, two armor, but also gives the, your, pal your character one attack damage for this turn, so like how the rogue gets its weapon, the druid has a weapon, but only for one turn, and then it goes away at the end of the turn, so that's... Uh, you know, use it or lose it, whereas the rogues, you can activate the weapon and then just sit on it until you need to use it again. Uh, Warlocks, a uh, really nice card, but a little more costly. It takes two mana as well as two life, and you get to draw an extra card. But drawing power and having a steady hand is a huge asset. Uh, the mages is interesting, um, just deals one damage to anything, whereas the hunters was two just to the hero. The mages only deals one damage, but you can do to creatures or players. So this is really good with a lot of flexibility. You can kill off a lot of those weak uh, minions that they send out, or you can whittle a minion down if need be. Um, and that's why I think, again, why the paladin one's so weak. The mage directly counters the paladin. You, know, you spend every turn summoning a minion, they can spend every turn killing that minion, unless you somehow enhance it. So that's... Another reason why I think the Paladin is not as good as some of the others. And then lastly is the Priest, which I kind of already hinted at earlier. Heals to, to any cre any character or creature on the field. Alright, so let's play a game. Um, for this, I'm going to use one of my best decks. I'm going to use my Mage deck here. And uh, you know what, screw it, let's try a ranked match. Now as of right now, I don't lose rank points, so I can't D-level. Um, only increase, so there's not really any harm to just play. 
So, game goes out, searches, and finds you a worthy adversary. Oh, and I clicked the button. Whoops. That's okay, I barely have any friends as it is. Just two. It doesn't usually take very long. There it goes. Maybe. There's always little comical things around it, but it always lands on worthy opponent. Jaina, Looks like I'm fighting Jaina. another mage of the same rank. You asked for it. My magic will All right. tear you apart. Uh, it looks like I'm going second. So the person who goes second starts their hand with four cards instead of three. And then also I'll get a fifth card, not from my deck, uh, which you'll see that in a second. Let's see, this... Uh, this is a decent starting hand. I'll keep it. It's a lot of low stuff, so hopefully I'm going to draw into some more powerful things. But I've got some good damaging spells, uh, a counter spell. Well, actually, it's called counter spell. And a mirror image, which is going to give me some defense. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that. Now, here's that extra card the coin. Uh, costs no mana and gives me an extra mana for that turn only. So I'm going to play mirror image which is probably what I'm going to play out first, too. Um, but, let's see, what do I want to do? You know, actually, I think what I'll do is go ahead and do an Arcane Missile. It's going to do three damage split randomly. Went all to that person. That's actually not what I wanted. And I'll go ahead and just play another one. There we go. Wanted to kill some of their things. Now the mirror image summons uh, zero power but two toughness uh, minion. And they have taunt, which is this little fancy border here. It looks like a shield. With taunt, you cannot directly attack the other person uh, with attacks. Spells still can hit, but attacks cannot go through until you've killed creatures with taunt. So a taunt creature can be pretty powerful. Uh, now this turn, I'm going to go ahead and I don't really need to worry about the taunters also because they have no one to attack me just yet. So I'm going to go ahead and just throw a fireball. Go ahead and just clear the field. Um, having cards is very useful, obviously. You don't want to have no cards and just be drawing one card a turn. You want to try and have a card advantage. Um, so, you know, when it's all possible, you know, if you can just play your little hero power to gain some advantage on them, it's worthwhile. All right. Now let's see. I'm going to go ahead and summon some mirror entities of my own. And then also I'm going to throw down this Cobalt. And in my turn. Now this Cobalt has a 2 power, 2 toughness, and then also a special effect. Spell damage is plus 1. So spells that do damage now do one more. So if I had saved those uh, arcane missiles I had shot earlier, right here, instead of 3 damage it would have done 4. So, you know, could have potentially done more damage. But, let's see. Alright, so he's going to fireball my kobold here. And in the turn. Alright, so I'm doing pretty good so far. Since I think I am. I'm going to go ahead and drop down this counter spell here. What it's going to do is whenever they cast a spell like that arcane missiles, it's going to just negate that spell. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that down. Because it's a mage, it's going to play some spells probably pretty soon. Now that might be useful to save for later when they're going to try and throw a big spell, but I'm going to go ahead and stop them early game. Very dragon. It's kind of an annoying creature because it can't be targeted by my spells or my abilities, so it's just there. Now if I play something that hits all things, uh, doesn't directly target like this, it will still get hit by that at least. So let's go ahead and uh, not much to do, so I'm just going to draw some extra cards. And then uh, I'll throw a fireball directly at the person. Not much to do there. Luckily, it's going to have to knock through these first to attack me directly, so we'll see what he does. As you can see, it looks like we're playing pretty similar decks. Azure Drake's nice, gives you spell damage and draws a card, and it's pretty powerful. So, it's a pretty solid card to have in any mage deck. Let's see. Two damage to everything and freeze them. I think I will play this now. It's going to take all my mana this turn, but uh, it's going to allow me to kill this, 
kill this and do some damage to that. But it's also going to freeze it so it can't attack me next turn. So let's go ahead and block that off. Plus that's a good way to get rid of that fairy. Since I can't target it directly, I'll hit it indirectly and do good. Now I've got these guys here, Archmages, very powerful cards, 4 damage, 7 health, plus 1 spell damage. And in case you haven't figured it out, the little number up in the top left, that's how much mana you need. You get 1 mana crystal per turn at the start of your turn. So on next turn I'll have 7, all the way up to 10. 10 is the max. Um, only real difference that I know of is the Druid has some cards to give temporary mana for like that turn and stuff like that. Um, but no need to really get into that just yet. I wonder. Take a little time. You are on a timer uh, to prevent stalling. So, let's see what she does. Got a secret down too. That's interesting. That's kind of lame. Oh no, it did. Okay, cool. So, countered her secret too. So, I guess that's okay. Uh, what do I want to play? A lot of options. Kind of want to kill some of his stuff. Uh, let's see. I think I will go ahead and knock off his Drake. And then I'm going to play my own Drake. Increases spell damage, draw a card. Flame Strike, very powerful spell in the mages. It arsenal allows you to preferably nuke their entire field. So, very powerful spell. Obviously, it costs a lot too. So, now I'm probably gonna want to start getting some more creatures out, like my spell damaging creatures, uh, before I play all my spells out, and then they don't really have a lot of usefulness. Okay, it's gonna do two damage to my Drake and two to the person next to it. It's probably going to try and kill my Drake this turn. Nope, nope, I get, I get one turn with it. Alright, let's see here. Let's go ahead and play this more expensive one right now. And... Throw a fireball. This guy. Oh, it's frozen, so. Here. Probably should have the fireball directly. Just let her play up some creatures before I hit her with the flame strike. Ugh, more freezing. No thaw cards, to my knowledge. <laughs> Pretty evenly matched, although she's about to take a lead right there. I say she, although clearly the name is Mike, so. Ah, good. Get some more stall action going. And. Let's go ahead and get out uh, another Archmage. And then. See, I don't want to play too much, because if she flame strikes me, I don't want her to kill all my creatures, so. I will slow it down a tad. Um, you know, if you play everything out, and then they hit something to nuke your field, then you're left with nothing, and you've got no hand, and you your opponent's got a huge hand. So, definitely is something to be wary of. Now, I'm probably going to flame strike this turn, just to uh, totally screw her up. I'm going to flame strike. Then I'll throw a fireball to kill her archmage. And then hit her for 8 direct damage. So, really good play right there. She's probably going to play to strike me right back. Nope, polymorph. Turn one of my guys into nothing. Oh, now a flame strike. Kill the whole field. Nope gonna silence taking away my plus one spell damage. Alright, let's see what I got here. 
quite a bit of stuff. Not sure how much I really want to play out. So let's go ahead and draw power. See what other stuff I got to play with. Um, man, these are some tough choices. Again, you don't want to play everything because then if they hit you with a flame strike, you're screwed. Let's go ahead and just go ahead and just hit her for a lot of damage. Got her on a six health, so five health. So if I get another fireball, that's game. Unless she plays something to heal her. So I'm in a pretty good situation right now. I've still got a lot of control. Can freeze all our minions, do a lot of damage to all our minions. A couple of our minions that can attack. One damage to all minions, so got a fair amount of control still if she should get the upper hand on the creature. Alright, just gonna freeze him. Oh. And then do that. It's gonna be four damage because he's already frozen. So right there. So now she's got a huge lead. Very powerful character. Little character. The damage can severely add up. So let's see here. Let's go ahead and I don't want a flame strike. I'll save the flame strike for when she's got more out there. Maybe I can hit her bigger. Let's go ahead and just freeze both those guys. And then let's go ahead and throw this guy out, does two random damage, just a just a nifty card. And then let's throw down this one's cheaper. It's gonna lower the cost of my spells to play. But it's, more importantly it's gonna allow me to throw a fireball at her still. You know, worst case scenario if I can stall her just a couple more turns, I've got her I've got her beat. But that is easier said than done. I'm not going to play Flame Strike this turn because I cost 7. I'm going to freeze my guys. Fireball on that. Fireball on me directly. 2 damage. Done to that guy. Yeah. Well, the Flame Strike will kill everything now, so that's nice. Um, I'll play the Gadget Zan. Uh, it's going to let me draw a card whenever I play a spell. I'm gonna have to go ahead and play the flame strike. And then let's throw that out there. And then we'll end it. I'm probably gonna win, but you never know. All it takes is one good card for them to draw to turn the game around. Fireball right there, that's gonna hit me directly apparently. And then freeze me, which does nothing. Because that doesn't stop you from acting, that just stops you from attacking when done to your hero. Not sure what they're doing now. Probably debating if they're gonna just give up or not. Drawing the game out. What to do? What to do? Interact with the little environments. There we go, we got the fire going. Come on, you have... I hate when people do this. Just draw the game out. See, their timer's coming up now. She doesn't end. By the time it hits there, it's my turn automatically. And then on their next turn, you have even more limited time to prevent you from just walking away from your computer and making the game take forever. Ah, see, they left. Didn't even concede. They, like, all set forward or something. Just rage quit. Got my another star. Next win, and uh, I rank up to the next rank. So there you go. And then gonna level up, uh, which I don't get anything until level 20. And then I've got two wins so far on my way to three to get 10 coins. Um, I got a gold arcane intellect. I'm not really a fan of the gold cards. They're just like, I guess they're fancier. They have a little animation to them. Nothing major, but. I don't know, some people like to play with them. And that is it. That's Hearthstone in a nutshell. A lot to take in, but hope you enjoyed it along the way. And have a good one.